Got asked this question about when should my story begin? When should it actually start? Now, that's not as obvious a question as you might think. You know, you'd think the story starts from page one, but that's not necessarily the case. So the story can start several chapters into your book or several scenes into your screenplay. You know, you might have a couple of scenes or a couple of chapters beforehand that set up the characters and introduce the world, but that's not necessarily the start of the story. That is just the introduction of pieces that form a part of the story. The actual story is when the plot begins, when something happens to cause your protagonist, your main character, whatever term you want to use, your hero, your heroine to go off and actually chart a course that is different to the world that they have been living in before. So I want to talk today about what you need to do in the opening chapters of your book, the opening scenes of your TV show, your movie, if you're writing a screenplay, and how you can accomplish them best. The first thing that you need to do, and this is universal, is you need to hook the reader or you need to hook the viewer. If you bore the reader or the viewer within the first five minutes or five sentences of your work, why would they go on? Why would they continue to experience what you've put down for them? If they're bored, they're not going to continue. And remember, you are in competition with so many other forms of entertainment for people's attention. You're in competition with Netflix. You're in competition with TikTok and YouTube like we're on now. You're in competition with every other streaming service out there. You're in competition with other books. You're in competition with movies. You're in competition with people-to-people interactions. Although, let's be honest, if most of us are on here, it's probably because we prefer to be thinking about topics like writing in extreme depth rather than interaction interacting with other people. But that's just me. So, you are in competition with a lot of other sources for entertainment. So, you need to be able to hook the reader or hook the viewer within the first few moments of picking up your work. If you hook someone that quickly, you know they're going to read or watch your story all the way through. So that's the first thing you need to do is you need to hook them. You don't actually need to start your story uh, on the first page to hook someone. You just need to have something that is so interesting, so unique, so different that the reader wants to keep going. Now, that might be a really interesting character. It might be a really interesting concept. It might be a really cool world that they want to see more of. But either way, you need to hook them. To do that, you need to be interesting. One of the, this is something that I've talked about on TikTok and it's it's almost a formula to guarantee that someone will buy your book is you write your first chapter in a way that you open up with something that makes the audience ask why. Why is this happening? Why is the character doing this? What's going on? The best two examples that I have read recently is John Scalzi's Old Man's War. The first sentence of that book is something on the lines of, I was 75, uh, when I turned 75, I visited my wife's grave and then I joined the army. Now, all of us are asking, why is a 75-year-old man joining the army? How is that possible? We, we want to learn, we have to know more. Why is this society allowing an old dude whose wife is dead to go off and fight a war? The other example was from this book, the Bone Peddler, which is about the, it's, it's about this sort of rogue former, well, he is a, still a knight, but it's about this rogue knight who goes around stealing and then selling religious artifacts to churches across medieval England. And the opening sentence of that book is, in the crypt of the Abbey Hallowdean, the monks were boiling their bishop. Why are the monks boiling their bishop? What, what did the bishop do? Is the bishop alive? Is the bishop dead? What sort of monks are these? What sort of place is the Abbey Hallowdean that they are boiling their bishop? It makes you ask why. It raises questions. So if you have an opening sentence or paragraph or bit of dialogue in the case of a movie that makes the viewer ask questions, especially why, and that's because why is the most fundamental of all questions, then you will hook them and you will get them con- you will get them uh, to continue on and experience what you have created. So that's the, the top priority. Make them, uh, hook them, get them interested and make them ask things like, why is this happening? Why is this, why is this so? The next the, the sort of mid-level priorities are introduce characters, introduce world. Now, this is particularly so, introducing world is especially important in genre fiction where you are dealing with worlds that are not like the real world. So if you are dealing with a science fiction or fantasy world that has a lot of lore and a lot of world building and you need to get the reader 
familiar with the world and familiar with how the world works so they can follow the characters along through it and understand what is happening world building and world introduction is important and needs to be done early on so that they so that the reader understands what's happening world building is also important in historical fiction because even though historical fiction is based in our world it is a world that no longer exists and not all of us are terribly familiar with the social conventions of feudal japan or how life was like in the american west or the currency system of medieval venice okay you need to introduce especially if these things are important you obviously wouldn't go into depth if they're not plot relevant but if these things are plot relevant then as part of world building you must introduce them early on so that when a character interacts with these systems and interacts with these part of the world with these parts of the world later on in your book the reader understands what's happening so world building the next step is of course characters who are we going to be spending our time with throughout the story you need to be able to introduce the characters you need to introduce what kind of people they are what their struggles are early on you don't necessarily need to introduce the quote unquote story this early in the piece but as you'll see you're slowly introducing bit by bit throughout the story in these opening chapters it doesn't have to be cramming everything into one bloated chapter that is carrying a lot of weight it, it can be done don't get me wrong and some genres pull it off really well especially crime thriller genres where they introduce a lot of elements very early on because then the rest of the book is about a detective solving a case or about a criminal trying to carry their crime to its conclusion but you do not need to cram everything into one or two chapters you can spread it out over three or four case in point even though books are not necessarily written this way anymore lord of the rings the first book in lord of the rings and, and even the movie follows it quite closely although it's not as immediately clear because it's through scene cutaways and there's no dialogue to explain it but in the opening two chapters of lord of the rings it's all world building and character introduction you you meet gandalf you meet frodo bilbo the other hobbits in the shire but then gandalf goes off and spends oh sorry before that there's of course bilbo's birthday where bilbo pulls his magic disappearing act with this ring that he's found and gandalf's like oh, what's going on here this looks sus gandalf goes off for 17 years on his own little mini quest to discover whether or not this is sauron's ring of power 17 years that is a huge time gap you don't see it in the movie because you just see a short montage of gandalf going into ancient libraries and then coming back to the shy but that was a 17 year gap so that means you actually had quite a bit of stuff going on with just character and world building introduction before the story started because the actual story of lord of the rings the inciting incident which put the character on a path was when gandalf told frodo take the ring this is the ring of power get out of the shire right now that was the inciting incident because before that frodo was just chilling out in the shire he was just living his life yeah he had this ring but it was sitting at the bottom of a chest in his house he wasn't doing anything with it he was waiting for gandalf to come back he didn't even know when gandalf would come back so that's that's the the uh the mid-level stuff you need to worry about is character introduction what kind of people they are what their struggles are and world building the last part and as in priority wise as well is actually the inciting incident what is this thing that happens to the character that sets them off on their story so what's the inciting incident in finding nemo i use it a lot in my examples because it's a pixar movie really does great writing the inciting incident is not the death of marlon's wife coral and their children that is a backstory scene if you will that introduces marlon's character and it introduces the world of these fish on the coral reef the inciting incident is when a diver kidnaps nemo because that then sets marlon off on a different path than he normally would that is when marlon had to leave the safety and comfort of the coral reef and his anemone home and go save nemo and that was several scenes into the movie so as you can see the inciting incident didn't happen straight away it did happen at the beginning but it didn't happen at the very beginning at the very start of the movie another example another disney movie mulan the inciting incident in mulan is not the hun invasion of china at the very first scene that is world building that is conflict setup that is showing you that this is the world that mulan lives in and these are potentially the conflicts that she must face the inciting incident was when the imperial messenger came from the capital and said we are raising an imperial army every able-bodied man from 
every family must, uh, one able-bodied man from every family must report for duty. Milan decided to take her father's place in secret and pose as his, his like unknown son, I think it was. That's the inciting incident, but that happens several scenes into the movie. By that point, Mulan had already uh, been to the matchmaker, failed in going to the matchmaker. She'd already had a conversation with her father about not fitting in, not really feeling like she belonged. So this was all character introduction and world building before the inciting incident. And then, of course, there's the other example about world building and character introduction before the inciting incident in Lord of the Rings. So it's genre dependent. Big, complex worlds, it's okay to get away with more world building and more character introductions so that you can ground your reader in that world before you kick off the story. But in other genres, say crime thriller that's taking place in our world, romance that's taking place in our world, thriller that's taking place in our world, you don't need as much world building because odds are the audience is familiar enough with the world because they live in it that you do not need to spend all this time introducing the world. You can go straight into crime has been committed, detective is on the case, or two people have met, there's an instant connection, will they end up together? You don't need to spend all the time, all this time on world building and character introduction. You can just get straight into it because people are already grounded in that world because that world is close to our world. Think of it as a sliding scale. The closer your world is to our world, the sooner the inciting incident can happen at the story and the sooner the inciting incident should happen in your story. The further away your world is from our world, the more world building and character intros you'll have to put in before the inciting incident so the reader can really understand the gravity of the inciting incident. So that's these are the things that you need to think about when you are opening your your book, your screenplay. All right, anyway, thanks for watching. Give me more questions, like and share this with your writing mates, and as always, happy writing.